Hi, I'm Dr. Chuck Maxner, one of the uh, neuro-ophthalmologists based here in Halifax. And uh, what we're going to demonstrate for you today is checking for the uh, pupil function to light in preparation for understanding the afferent pupillary defect. So when examining the pupils, the key uh, point is to have the patient in a somewhat dim, dimly lit illumination to enable uh, the pupils to dilate slightly so that you'll be able to pick up the pupil response to light. It's always important to realize that because of the balance of the neuroanatomy controlling pupil function, that when you stimulate one eye with light, both pupils should constrict. So you give the person a distance fixation target, so if you just look at the distance target, and then you dimly illuminate the pupils to see that they're symmetric and there do not appear to be any structural abnormalities. And then you shine the light in one eye, and what you should see in that eye is a brisk constriction of the pupil. And if you're able to see the opposite eye at the same time, there'll be a consensual response, and that should be symmetric. Then you can come across to the opposite eye, and same thing. You can illuminate the pupil, it should constrict, and the contralateral pupil should constrict just as well. To determine whether there's an afferent pupillary defect, it's important to swing the light quickly from eye to eye to see whether the pupils maintain their same constriction. So you can check the pupil in one eye with a count of 1 1,000 and come across to the other eye, 1 1,000, 1 1,000, and back and forth like that. And what you're looking for, as soon as you hit the newly stimulated eye, is that the pupil briskly constricts or stays the same as the opposite eye. If when you hit the next eye you see it dilate or fail to constrict, it would suggest there's some problem with that optic nerve carrying the light back into the visual control centers. You can then quantify it by using filters, but we'll pass on that today. So the key point is, when you are looking for the afferent pupillary defect, is to maintain a balanced light exposure of both pupils so that no eye is um, overstimulated with light and, bleed, and you have a bleached retina contend with, stimulate one eye and quickly come across to the opposite and back again and back again, checking to make sure that you have symmetric pupil constriction. If you think you're seeing an afferent, the mistake most people make is they'll sit on that eye and watch it for a while. And what you're doing is inducing a bleach and you'll actually induce an afferent pupillary defect. It's important to keep the light moving from eye to eye as you make your clinical decision. 